Thanks, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I did just almost fall through the stage. Uh, that was all planned. Um, so, so, it's a pleasure to be here at OzCon. Uh, I, w you may think, what on earth is a satellite dude doing in front of you all? And I sometimes ask myself the same. Um, but the essential thing is that we actually see quite some parallels between the way in which we're developing satellites and, and the, the, the philosophy of the open source community. Um, and that's one of the reasons why there's a connection. And I hope you'll see that and other connections here. So I want to start us off by taking a look at this. Um, this is what we call the Earth. Uh, it doesn't need much of an introduction. It doesn't need much of an introduction in part because the Apollo 17 astronauts, as they were hurtling around the moon in 1972, took this rather iconic image. But beautiful as this image is, it's static. And the world is constantly changing. It's constantly changing on days and weeks timescales with human activity. And the problem is, a static image like this is not sufficient. If we want to take care of the planet, we need more regular imagery. And satellite imagery today is typically really old. So satellite imagery you find online is typically many years old. Years old, so one to five years old is typical. And if we're going to do something to take care of this planet, we sort of need to get inside the human decision-making loop, inside the human action loop. And we posit that it would be really great to have daily images of the entire planet. And so this is the vision we set out to accomplish with Planet Labs. And with daily images of the planet, what we anticipate that we'll be able to do is monitor deforestation, monitor the ice caps melting, help people in developing countries improve their agriculture, track ships, track mining output, help various humanitarian and commercial businesses, in short. In general, take care of this planet. So what's standing in our way? Why do we not have imagery of the whole planet every day today? Well, this is the main reason. Satellites are big, they're expensive, and they're slow. This one weighs 6,000 kilograms. It took the entire fairing of a rocket to launch it. It cost $866 million. No, I'm not joking, $866 million. It's rather large, as you can see, uh, by the little people there. Um, satellites like these have done a tremendous job in helping us to take care of the planet, actually. But if we want to take imagery of the whole planet every day, we, we need little satellites. We need to make compact satellites that we can launch lots of. And this model isn't really scalable. So at Planet Labs, we looked at making more compact satellites. And I'm going to show you what our satellite looks like. This is our satellite. I hasten to add that this is not a scale model. It's the real size. It's 10 by 10 by 30 centimeters and it weighs four kilograms. And we have stuffed the latest and greatest technology into this little satellite, such that even though it's really small, it's very capable. In many senses, it's more capable than some of the big satellites. And we call this satellite Dove. You see, um, satellites are typically named uh, after birds, but typically birds of prey. Eagle, swoop, kill, kestrel eye, spy, these kind of things, because they're typically military satellites. But ours have a humanitarian mission, and so we call them doves. But we haven't just built them, we've launched them into space. And not just one, but many. Thank you. Um, and so I'm going to uh, show you uh, some of the early pictures of that. But before I do, I want to show you a little bit of how we got going. You see, we're a Silicon Valley company, and we built our first satellite in our garage. And that's pretty unusual in the space sector, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and we took many of the sort of philosophies of, of agile, aero, um, agile software development. We call it agile aerospace, um, to coin that phrase. And, and so we release early, release often. We put our satellites um, up into space, test them, iterate, put up new ones. We stuff the latest technology in from the c consumer electronics, leveraging other technology around, just like everyone else does. 
um, but is atypical in the space sector. And what bonds our team is using satellites to help people around the planet. Um, in fact, the founders of our company, Chris, Robbie, and I, we met at a UN conference looking at how to use satellites to help humanity. How to use satellites to help track climate change, help um, with agriculture in developing countries, and things like this. And that's really what motivates us uh, at Planet Labs. So I'm going to show you a video of two of, our, two of our satellites being released from the International Space Station back in February. And I must add that this is not an animation because it looks like one. Um, it was actually a video ta being taken by the astronaut pointing his uh, camera out of the, of the space station window. There's a hair on his lens. <laughs> so those two satellites give you a little bit of a sense of scale <laughs> with respect to the space station solar arrays there, how, how small our little satellites are. So those are the first two of 28 satellites that were launched back in February. Uh, which became the largest constellation of Earth imaging satellites in human history. Um, but that's not where we stopped. Thank you. <laughs> that's not where we stopped. Um, we're on a path to get to this ubiquitous imagery of the Earth. And for that, we need more than 100 satellites. Um, and actually, since this video was taken, we launched a thir further 39, 11 on a Russian booster, and another 39 that have just launched last week, um, which are actually sitting on the International Space Station now, ready for the astronauts to throw them out the window. Um, and, and so, but we're still early days, really. Um, we're still developing the technology and we're pushing it forward. Um, but I'm going to show you how it will look like when, when we put up all the satellites. So this video shows a large ring of satellites. They're all pointing down, looking at the Earth, and taking pictures. They stay, the plane stays fixed with respect to the sun, and the Earth rotates underneath. It rotates every 24 hours, so it takes a picture of every spot on the Earth's surface every 24 hours, effectively acting like a line scanner for the planet. It doesn't take a picture of anywhere on the planet. It takes a picture of every single place on the planet every day. So now I'm going to show you some of the images that we, we have been taking. Um, oh, this, firstly, this is how we get the data back. We have ground stations dotted around the world uh, to receive our images. They're typically five-meter dishes that steer at our satellite as they go over the top. And we have beautiful artwork on our uh, antenna, as you can see. So this was the very first image we took down of our very first satellite from our very first satellite. And the wonderful thing was, and very pertinent to us here, was that it was just a few tens of kilometers away from here in Oregon. Um, and it was of a forested region, as you can see. And the really great thing was that we could see individual trees on this um, uh, patch of, of land. And we had always said we'd be able to track and count every single tree on the planet every day and how cool that would be. And the first image we got down was absolutely uh, um, uh, spelled that story. This is the first image we got down from the two satellites that you just saw getting deployed. This happened to be over the UC Davis campus in California when we took the image. The important thing is if we look at this compared with the latest, latest previous image, the one on the right, um, you can see that several buildings have been built. The general point is that we can track urban development as it happens in every city around the world every day. You also see the agricultural fields there. We can track crop yield in every single field, in every farmer's field, in every country around the world every single day and help him or her to improve their crop uh, development. There's a picture we happened to take a couple of days ago. Now there's the first pictures from our uh, satellite fleet that we just launched three weeks ago on the Russian booster. And we saw an, a, 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 a plane in the taxiway here is an image we took down of uh, Brazil, where we zoomed into a little uh, reservoir. And you can see how the water level has completely changed compared with the previous image that was taken. Here's the Suez Canal. Um, and you can see ships lining up. In general, we'll be able to track ship movement as, it ha as, as they take place from every port around the world every day. Here's an image of a coal mine. And if I go forward one, you can see the, previ the, the previous most image that was taken of that area. And you can see how much change there's happened to that. Can you just go back um, one slide? Thank you. And if I just go forward again, you'll see the change again. So it's amazing how much development has happened in this mine since the previous satellite image was taken. 
Here's another image that we got down just two days ago uh, in China. And you think, oh, that looks relatively normal, an agricultural region, a town up in the top left. And then we look at the previous image that was taken of that area. Boom. Well, there isn't a town in the top left. <laughs> They're using completely different agricultural techniques. You see the lake at the bottom, it's been completely drained. So let me just uh, go forward one more and I highlight a few of those changes. Can you just go back one slide again? Thank you. Just look at the change between that and this. It's phenomenal how the world is changing. I mean, China, for one, is one giant construction site. But perhaps we won't see this sort of dramatic change as we take pictures of the whole earth every day. But we do expect to see changes. And it, this goes to illustrate the value of taking regular snapshots of our Earth's surface. And almost every image we get down, we see demonstrable change that has happened. And it is incredible how fast our planet is changing. So why am I here? Um, I want to pause for a second, because we think that there are hundreds of applications of this data. I've mentioned just a few, uh, illustrated a few with these early images. Um, but it seems like there's a gigantic task to, to process and get the useful information out of this image, these imagery. So we believe the best thing we can do is ensure uh, universal access to the data. Um, and so the first reason I'm here is this. We're going to build a developer API so that anyone, anywhere in the world, can access this data, can run their algorithms on this data set to enable them to find the information they need to make better decisions. Um, thank you. And, and so I'm here to tell you that we are still early on in this, in this project. Uh, but If you, I, I just encourage you to start thinking about how this data set may be of use to whatever you're trying to do and whether or not you could use this developer API to develop applications that are relevant to you. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that we're active contributors to the open source community. Um, in fact, we build on a lot of open source uh, software. Of course, just getting the images down is only the beginning. We, there's a tremendous amount of processing with a large data set. And we build on a lot of infrastructure, uh, open source infrastructure, And in particularly in the GIS world, um, we contribute to um, a lot of the uh, 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 open source software programs that are out there for processing I I imagery. In fact, um, we, um, some of the lead uh, developers of open source software, like uh, we have Jesse Andrews on our team, who was the, one of the lead developers of OpenStack, um, Frank Womadam, who is the uh, lead developer and maintainer of GDAL, Um, so we have a core team that, that really cares a lot about open source software, and we care to contribute back as we develop new things. So, for example, we have a compositor that takes deep stacks of imagery and removes the, the, the um, cloud layers and other things that you want to put together in a mosaic, and we open source that one. Um, and as we see other software that we will open source, uh, we will push it out there, and we'd love you to continue to contribute to the bits that we push out there, and we'll continue to contribute to the um, other open source software that we build on. So finally, I just wanted to bring us back to our little spaceship Earth. I want you to imagine, if you were to have imagery of this entire planet at your fingertips, um, this entire planet every day, what would you do with that data? What What would you, how would you explore the planet? How would you use this data to help your, your, your goals? Thank you very much. <laughs>